Hey, what's going on? I'm Matt O'Leary back with another video and I'm going to be talking about Adam Gase and some of his mistakes that he made in week one. But before we get started, just wanted to mention that you can follow me on social media at Matt O'Leary and why. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe to the podcast. You can call in, leave me your question and I'll try to get to it on the show. If you haven't already, please make sure to check out the Patreon, patreon.com slash Matt O'Leary and why you get pregame live streams you get articles podcasts all bunch of fun stuff more content on there this week so definitely check it out link in the description so the new york jets put together a pretty poor effort in week one against the buffalo bills they lost 27 to 17 but the store the score doesn't tell the whole story uh it really wasn't that close and from the beginning, things went bad as the New York Jets started with three straight three and outs. And the play calling came under fire yet again under Adam Gase. And it was a major issue with this team. Going into this week, they were without Denzel Mims, who's expected to start on the outside. They went into this week with Perryman, who very inconsistent. Last year had a really good five games at the end of the year, but before that really struggled, hasn't put it together in his career. And Chris Hogan, who had like eight catches last year where you're starting outside receivers. So naturally you would think we're going to line up Le'Veon Bell on the slot. It did a little bit and it worked okay. Not as much as I would have liked to. And then Le'Veon Bell leaves with an injury. Chris Herndon, I would have tried to line up in the slot a little bit more, but realistically, my main gripe was not running two tight end sets. You have Ryan Griffin and Chris Herndon, who I think are both capable tight ends. They have pretty good tight end depth, and they don't have very good wide receiver depth. So naturally, you would think, okay, let me get my tight ends on the field more. They ran 12 personnel, meeting with two tight ends, six times in the game. Six out of 53 plays. So on 11% of their plays, they used multiple tight ends. And Ryan Griffin played just 17 snaps. Is it because of his health? Is it because that's not why you want to use your offense? I, I don't know. But if we're operating under the assumption that he was healthy enough to play and that he could play in this game, why aren't they using multiple tight end sets? It makes no sense when that is more of a position of strength when your outside wide receivers are very big question marks. In the slot, you know what you have in Crowder. He made a big play. That's what he does. He is a solid slot guy. On the outside... It was a ghost town, which leads me to another thing. 53 plays on offense is way below average. Usually teams are running on, on the low end, like 65 to 80 plays on the high end. So they are well below average on the number of plays that they ran in this game. The tempo was also slow. At times when they picked up the pace, they started to move, gain a little bit of momentum. Where the Bills playing in prevent a little bit, but usually Sam tends to play play a little bit better when the speed is there just the methodical seemingly tiresome offense is just so boring and draining to watch on third down Gase's offense was just 36 percent obviously they were put in a couple of bad third down situations because of previous play calling another issue that he continues to do this year that plagued him last year was running the ball on second and long why is that even a thing like last year he ran it over 50 percent when no one else in the league or very few teams in the league were running over 35 percent on second and long you're just setting yourself up and your young quarterback up for failure against a team that is extremely good against the pass and you know what's coming and your outside receivers stink and how about the screen setup they were trying to run screens on third and long like the the first completion of the day was to hogan it was like third and nine and they threw a screen pass, a design screen to Hogan. Why Why are you manufacturing targets for Chris Hogan? I, I, I don't understand. At this point, Le'Veon Bell was still healthy. And you had Herndon, who could play on the outside, too. Like This is just a common theme under Adam Gase. He really hasn't been good. He, in 11 of the 17 games he's coached as the Jets head coach, they have scored under 20 points. Eight of his losses have been double-digit losses. He's 2-5 and five in the AFC East. He's 2-7 and seven on the road. And his last 25 road games, in the last 25, so that's a pretty big sample size as a head coach. He is 5 and 20. 5 and 20. And I know the Bills are a better team. It should have been a lot closer than what it was. They gave you a couple of chances off of Allen fumbles where you could have got yourself back into the game, but they didn't. This is just a, an, another example of an Adam Gase team, one, not go, showing up to play. They never got off the bus, which tends to be an issue. We saw it against the, the first time against Miami. We saw it against Cincinnati. They just don't show up, especially on the road. They are brutally bad on the road. And 
it's just not a good offense. If Did you watch any other games of the weekend? What I decided to do at the 4 o'clock hour, I flipped on Red Zone, and then I watched the Sunday Night Football game, and it doesn't look like they're playing the same sport. And part of it's personnel. It is the offensive line still needs work. They need help on the outside. And the quarterback didn't play well. Like, we can, we can admit that. We can say that the quarterback didn't play well in week one. Do I think that he is a bust? No. Do I think that he could play better down the stretch of this season as the season progresses? Absolutely. He's flashed. He's better than what he is this week. I wasn't happy with his performance. I think he played poorly. The interception was brutal. That can't happen. Running out of bounds and essentially taking a sack instead of throwing it away can't happen in your third year. He would admit that, but I don't think that means that he's going to suck this entire year and that Sam Darnold is a bad quarterback. He played a bad game. Tom Brady played a bad game also. Yes, Tom Brady has done a lot more in his career than Sam Darnold, but like sometimes it's going to happen. And when you go up against a, a really good defensive team and your play calling is that inept on the offensive side of the ball, how much of that is on you? And a part of it is, like part of the reason why they lost is because Sam Darnold was bad. That's no denying that, but it, was that the main reason? I'd argue no. I would argue that it was on the coaching staff. The team wasn't ready to play. Again, the team was set up so poorly running running their offense. Again, this is just such a common theme, and it's beyond frustrating to watch week in and week out. And it doesn't get any easier. Next week, the San Francisco 49ers, who just lost their first game after being the NFC champions, they're going to be motivated. That's a strong defense. Nick Bosa coming off the edge. Are you kidding me? That's a really, really, really good defense right there. Really good defense. It's not going to get any easier. Got to figure it out. Something has to change. You can't go in week in and week out and have the same exact game plan and then wonder why it doesn't work. It's just frustrating. It's really frustrating. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Am I wrong about Adam Gase? Can someone please sell me on Adam Gase? Am I nuts here? Let me know in the comments down below. You can follow me on social media. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Make sure to subscribe, and I'll talk to you next time.